All right. Uh, so I only have a brief moment to tell you a little bit about how we think about the space. And I know all of you are builders and developers in the Ton ecosystem. So hopefully some of this can help you build better with Ton. All right, so very quickly, just talking again very briefly, what is Web3 all about? It's about the web of ownership. We know that already. But when you think about what it is that you actually own, the token is a representation of what exactly? It's a representation of a network effect. Whether this is Ton as a token itself or whether this is you launching tokens on Ton, you're building network effects that have both utility in the application use case, maybe like a game, but also specifically in the financial side. Never before until Web3 did we have a way in which we had these two systems integrate together and to join in these network effects. And just to give you an idea of why these network effects are so valuable, basically in Web2, the most valuable thing for these companies, whether it's Apple, Facebook, Google, is access to their network effects. And even for games, let's say like a Fortnite or a PUBG, for instance, actually when you join that system as a player, you're joining the network effect, and that's actually where all the value sits. But in Web3, what's interesting about uh, uh, the sort of network tokens and network economies is that they're co-joined with each other. So in Web2, for instance, if Apple was to grow even bigger, that's not good news for the rest of the ecosystem. But in Web3, when actually one token ecosystem grows, it benefits everything in the ecosystem. So for instance, in the Ton example of Ton, if Ton does well, not, does, not only does everything in the Ton ecosystem improve, but actually also broadly in Web3, other tokens will do well as well. And also when certain projects inside uh, the Ton ecosystem, maybe it could be Hamster Combat or Catizen or what or whatever it is, when these tokens become more powerful, more valuable, have bigger networks, you can access them because of the permissionless nature of the blockchain. That means you can always avail yourself to these network effects, so you can take advantage of that. Right? That's one of the superpowers of Web3. Now, it's very important, though, and I think I, we see this a lot in our portfolio, to think about what makes a network valuable, what makes essentially a token ecosystem valuable. And it is about the strength generated from each connection. So in other words, often it starts off, you as a project generator might say, okay, I'm making a game, I'm making a product, I'm trying to deliver value to my users. That's the starting point. But at the end of the day, you want to join a network because of the value that the network itself provides, not specifically just the company. That's kind of the kickoff. So for instance, think about it for Ton. Are you joining Ton? Maybe you join Ton because you want to avail yourself to the network effects of what Telegram can offer. That would be stage one. But going forward, you probably want to access the network because of other developers, other applications, other services, other wallets. And that's actually why you join it. And with certain more mature ecosystems, say like Ethereum, you're not joining Ethereum because of Vitalik. You're joining it because there's many other DeFi protocols, many other systems in place. In other words, you're joining because of the strength of that network. So when you're thinking about developing basically your project, think about how you create these better network connections. And this you see in multiplayer games, you see this basically in social networks all over. Now a few things to distinguish, and we see this a lot when we look at parameters and, and, and numbers, which is that viral effects are not network effects. So you can avail yourself to the access of the growth of users and grow really fast, but they do not produce a network effect. They help you produce, get users that then can potentially be a network effect. So bringing in customers is great, but you need customers to talk to each other. You need them to build a network. So that's kind of one important factor to think about. Just users alone is not enough. How do they come together? How do they create a community, as we like to say in Web3, to build these networks? The other thing is that there are different types of network effects, right? And so obviously the classic form of network effect that the old type of, you know, Sarnoff's law is basically one where it's had a hub and spoke model where you know, you're creating, you're creating all the value and others have access to that as a classic network effect. That's not a very powerful network effect, right? But, you know, you may already heard of Metcalf's law. That's probably the more famous one. Uh, but, of course, Reed's law is a perhaps more relevant example of actually how you build network effects within a blockchain ecosystem because it's possible that within that network, some of the actual other token ecosystems you're building might even be bigger than the L1 or L2 that you're building on top of, as an example, but as a result, we'll build more value broadly in that ecosystem. In other words, for this Reed's Law network effect to place, you're hoping, actually, that your application will be successful, which will then grow the value of the entire network, which is basically what network effects is all about. And so empowering your users in your network to build more network effects is actually how you should be thinking about building, whether it's a protocol, a game, an application, whatsoever. Now, I want to cover this topic 
because right now the NFT ecosystem in Ton isn't yet that mature in comparison to things like Ethereum or Solana. But I think it's important to look at, you know, when you think of meme coins or game tokens, actually we think of them as very much in the same category. So to us, meme coins and NFTs are actually the same thing. They just play in different spectrums. Uh, and i sort of give you an illustration. You know, for all the people who have been doing NFTs back in 2020, 21, 22, they actually launched tokens from their NFT collections to broaden their audiences, right? Basically making their cultural capital more economic. But right now what you're seeing, many of the meme coin communities are doing the opposite, right? They're actually starting economic, they grow basically their memes and their basically token economies, and now they're issuing NFTs basically to distinguish their customer base based on cultural, symbolic, and social value as well. So on that note, I think I just wanted to point out that as you're thinking about deepening essentially the network effect that you have within your application, which could be a game, could be a product, could be a service, think about where it sits between the cycle of capital. So we think cultural capital is the most important type of capital that you can have in, uh, in the world, because that's actually where we sink most of our money in. When you think about basically value, let's say call it if you have like you know, a million tokens of one thing, What's the difference between someone who has 1 million, 2 million, or 3 million tokens of the same thing? It starts to not be as distinguished as basically having a cultural asset. In the real world, we have things like fast cars, or the kind of houses we like to live in, or maybe the fashion that we wear. That's actually cultural and symbolic capital. So right now, tokens represent very much social and economic type of capital, right? With a little bit of culture and symbolic, and NFTs are much more cultural and symbolic. And we think over time, Actually, the cultural and symbolic capital will be much more valuable, which you'll see when you're launching in your game projects. Think about how you basically enhance that with the use of NFTs also within, of course, the Ton ecosystem. Now, one of the big elements around why Web3 is so valuable and so powerful is that value is shared across the entire ecosystem. Many of you have either benefited as a user or someone who launched a project to basically get customers from that, or you, you know, in the form of these things known as airdrops, right? And of course, this doesn't count numbers for 24, but over the last three years, not including this year, of which many of them, of course, were in the Ton ecosystem, something like over close to $22 billion of so-called airdrop free money was actually delivered to users for building value in the network. And of course, with the Ton ecosystem, you've seen actually lots of value being generated, essentially in the form of these airdrops. But first, what is airdrops? Airdrops is actually a way in which you basically simply do the inverse of marketing. You're paying the user, instead of paying the platform, like an Apple or a Google, to gain their attention so they create value to build network effects in your service, product, or whatever, right? And so the important thing is making sure that the people who are coming into the network are actually delivering true value, which at the moment sometimes is a problem because we have things like this. And I think this is a global problem. It's not just in the Ton ecosystem, which is civil attacks is everywhere. I mean, when you look at, for instance, the number of people that are farming tokens, you know, you know, things like whether it's in play to earn the first generation or tap to earn, this is the first phase, but you have to make sure that the players that are coming into your ecosystem are actual real players or actual real users that actually are delivering value. And you see ways in which people are constantly farming this and that's a bit of a problem. So how do we solve this and how do you as a project solve this in a way, because you want to build powerful networks. If 70 or 80% of your audience is bots farming your token, then you don't have a network. You don't have a network effect, and therefore the value of the ecosystem that you're trying to build won't be as powerful. And so one way to do this, and there's multiple ways, you know, people are doing proof of humanity and so on, is actually to build basically something around determining reputation. And this is where on-chain becomes very powerful. We're doing this with Mocha ID, but you can also figure out your own ways to do this because you can actually measure through on-chain activity what a user is doing. Very simple determination of this would be, once you receive a token, what do you do with it? Do you sell it on day one or do you actually do something with it? Are you staking it or are you using it? And then from that attribution, give it some kind of credibility, some reputation that then says you deserve more or you deserve less or maybe you deserve nothing. And that's actually what we need because this is what the real world is like. In real life, we deal with people with reputation. I have an introduction from you or you because I know and trust you and then I can do business with you. But if everyone is always anonymous, and nobody knows anyone based on no reputation, actually you have these kind of problems with civil attacks. And so one way to do this, what we're doing is through all of our portfolios, we're attesting reputation with Mocha ID, and then basically that reputation can then be used as a score to determine whether the user has a good reputation or bad reputation, which then we think will help strengthen the network effects. And I think everyone in here can think about how you create better determination 
not just showing that you're human. I'll give you an example. When we did airdrops, uh, or basically whitelist, actually what we did was we had to have people do KYC, and then it turns out that these KYC wallets were actually sold to some other people that basically started airdrop farming for like just a couple of bucks. So that's a problem that, that you know, simply KYC AML will not solve. Right? So again, you need a reputation layer. So I'll close with this thought. And what are we doing in Web3? You know, Web3 gaming, Web3 platforms, fun ecosystem, it's all about building economies. And there is one thing you know, that is always a steadfast truth in all growing economies. The higher the trust, the higher the GDP per capita. Every country that has a high level of trust has a good economy. And we need to build a higher level of trust in our ecosystems. We can't have these civil attacks. We need to build better reputation, better trust systems in our ecosystem so that we can have better economies and better business for all in the ecosystems that we built. Thank you very much.